Today, we're painting the pre-heresy Death Guard Primaris Captain. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting. Hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. Today's project is near and dear to me. We're painting pre-heresy Death Guard colors. Now there is a theme to this, guys. Obviously, we just painted the Lord of Contagion, that epic beast. Now we painted him here on Patreon, we painted him here on YouTube, and we also painted him live on Twitch. Well, today we are painting top to bottom, all the armor, all the details on this Primaris Captain with a kicker. We're painting in pre-heresy Death Guard colors. Oh, the fluff hurts. Well, it's been around for 10,000 years, so I say my Death Guard had it. We also used a 3D printed skull from my man Matt over at Pop Goes the Monkey. He has a Shapeway store. Check him out in the links below. We're gonna be exploring a lot of stuff today. We got almost a 30 minute long tutorial, guys. We're gonna be glazing, washing, everything in between airbrushing we're going to be breaking cardinal rules and painting white armor in the process i really wanted to show you guys the contagion lord with the original death guard color scheme and how the evolution of my mind works all these new eighth edition models got me so hype the model game has gone to 9,000. real talk though we're going to be taking it to the next level live on twitch this is friday you guys know what that means if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take a quick second to shout out a couple of clutch individuals over on Patreon. My man, Matt, Michael, of course, Brandon, Starvos, Neil, Kyle. Thank you guys. You came in clutch this week. I can't do it without you. Patreon is how I keep the lights on. And of course, the longward.net is the home of all 8th edition content and more. Let's do it. Let's do this thing. Primaris, Captain, Death Guard with the Shapeways 3D printed skull on the shoulder. Yeah, let's do this. As usual, we got all the pieces separated for the airbrushing process. It's mainly all about this cape, but not now. Don't look at this cape. So right out the gate, Vallejo Surface Primer, Ghost Gray, Airbrush Thinner. We have a whole video on how to use these things together, but this is how we're gonna prime the model. It's a very light gray polyurethane. thing. You know, it, it's kind of a bitch to make work. You gotta get the right ratio of thinner to primer and airflow. But as you see, we're getting solid coverage right here. We're good stick. It's a very light gray, which is what I want because we are going to be painting this guy in the traditional 30K pre-heresy legion colors. I wanna hear it. I know the fluff hurts. But it's real important to keep it thin and methodical, even strokes. Make sure to hit every piece of the model that's one coat then do it again that's two coats try not to leave pieces unprimed unevenness and drying could create texture it's not what you want to be seeing too easy all day or day so there he is looking good nice and primed ready to attack this model and i think we're going to start off with a classic no oldie but a goodie Weathered wood. This is secret weapon miniatures. This is one of my favorite colors in the game. It's a champagne white Off white, I don't even know, but we're gonna basically just say he was once gray He is now weathered wood Which is almost gray So we're getting really good stick with this gray because that's what I love about grays grays give you good bright color stick they keep most of the color intact. Solid. When in doubt, if you can't figure out what to prime something gray, you, you won't be mad. So we're going to now do the same thing. Methodical, even strokes. Let's get everything laid down. Same protocol. This will take, we'll actually probably do two or three coats here. Because we want to make sure every nook, every cranny is as weathered wood as possible. The back, the front, the up, the down. Don't drop your model. Too easy. So we are gonna combo this off of with an OG white. We're gonna be trying to preserve those original Legion colors. We're gonna do our best. So now he's weathered wood. Slight change, not a huge change. But now let's go into P3, Marrow White. This is a real good white. Airbrush is real easy. We're gonna get it 
mix down a little airbrush flow improver in the pot. And then we're going to just start picking on some spots, some raised surfaces. Center of the chest, those ab plates, tops of the hands and the knees, all that stuff. Now, if you guys have any questions on how to airbrush, we've got dozens upon dozens of videos on how exactly we break down our paints in our airbrush. And you can always find me live on Twitch on Tuesdays and Fridays. We do it live every week, guys. Here, however, we're going to skip a couple of those break those equipment breakdowns and we're just going to jump to the next stage here so now we are now that the white is showing through you can see where we're going with it we're going to try to capture that death guard white with a little maybe a little dinge to it but not not going crazy whatsoever i'm talking like maybe he just doesn't shine his armor every day but it's still really bright we definitely want to have a nice stark contrast to put this Death Guard pre-heresy Primaris dude with a converted Chaos face. We want to put him right next to our Lord of Contagion and really show you the evolution of that armor. That nice white deteriorating over time and turning into what my man Lord of Contagion aka Gonorrhea Gary looks like. So you best believe we're pulling out the greens. We're going to pull out all the colors today. All right. We're getting it. Second pass, third pass, fourth pass, real thin coats, keeping the white glaze worthy inside the airbrush. You want to use very little paint, a lot of air. Okay, now it's going to dry for a little while. We're going to reach in and grab our gloss varnish as a Vallejo product. We're going to throw a little airbrush thinner in there. We're just going to gloss them up. Now that we feel that we got a good white going here, we're going to lock that white in. That's the, that's the first thing, right? Lock that soft airbrush effect in. But secondly, we're now going to pull out Soft Body Black Secret Weapon Miniatures. We haven't used this before on stream. Now we're going to be using some matte medium from the art store. A little bit of water. And we're going to basically just do a cardinal sin here. We're going to wash this white model that looks beautiful with black. I know. You're not supposed to do that. People tell you not to do this. And normally, you don't have to. But I'm going to show you how we can use Soft Body Black, which is a different wash than you're used to. The Secret Weapon washes are very interesting. They're not all the same. Some are actually glazes, some are washes. Their chemical makeup is very unique. It's almost lacquered. And it already does a pretty good job over color. And we're breaking it up even further with the gloss of varnish and extra medium in the pot. Big shout out to Secret Weapon Miniatures and Les Bursley, who is the proprietor and inventor as it were, I don't think he's a proprietor because I think he put out his formula on the internet. Thank you, brother. All right, there it is, dried up. And you can see, it didn't completely destroy the white. It did distort it, did stain it a little bit, but that's fine because we're gonna come back on with the airbrush and we're gonna reestablish some of our whites. And for the most part, all the soft body black did was totally strengthen the crevices and just grayed out some of the flat spots it didn't actually leave any real build up see that's what i like about the secret web miniature washes so i can actually come in now airbrush the white back in and it's going to create a gray transition to a white transition this doesn't really happen with too many other washes once they stay in the model it's almost like you can never undo it with the airbrush here it's almost like a pre-shade it was almost like a super ghetto pre-shade but appreciate that got real deep in the crevices and is going to keep those strong black lines. And it didn't take no time at all. Literally wash back to the airbrush. We are going to be trying to capture some of that third edition flair. We're going to be doing so much brushwork on this guy. All we're doing with the airbrush is establishing a really fine, thin, incredibly smooth top coat of white. Get that wash, get those lines, the space marine lines washed in whip the airbrush out do yet again another subtle glaze it's like it's like if we if we were doing this with a paintbrush we'd be just blending it in with a little bit of glaze technique and it'd be interacting with those new grays that we just built but we're doing it with the airbrushes faster and look how many coats of paint we've already put down but they're so thin you can go so far with this that's what i love about it once we're done with this airbrush stage that's it for the airbrush on this model guys we're going to be going 100 percent hand paint brush we're gonna be cutting in all the edges on the white we're gonna be cutting all the details in 
it's going to be OG day here at next level painting. And you see how we're sneaking in, adding that white to the bottom of that grieve, fading it back up into what the soft body black did. It's amazing. You see how close we're getting to? We have no fear here. We are using 99% air, 1% paint. Lots of flow improver, lots of water, very thin applications here. You gotta just cut, you just gotta get in tight sometimes, guys. Get gangster. We're running about 23 to 25 psi once you pull the trigger, and we're just keeping it icy with that trigger work. And like I said, if you guys have any questions about that, literally we cover this live twice a week, all day, every day. So you see, we're just paying attention to the big flat panels. We're doing our best to direct the flow off of the flat panels onto the other ridges without trying to undo the hard edges that the soft body black created. And we're getting nice transitions. We're just redoing everything we just did. Simple. This is indeed a patient man's game. You do not want to rush this. You definitely want slow build up. Pay attention to your trigger work. Don't rush it, guys. That is the key to this stage. It's all gonna pay off, promise. You see how we're holding the model upside down, finding all the best angles, making them look his absolute best. So there we go. Now we have a little bit of that dinge we were talking about. Some great definition and some solid whites, but it's a little too dingy. I wanna preserve some of those transitions, some of those organic flares. I wanted to keep that brush stroke look alive so right now we're going to jump into decayed metal from scale these guys easily make the best golds i've ever utilized they have amazing realistic almost lacquered metallics so smooth so we're going to do a quick base coat of decayed metal on all the stuff that's going to be gold rapid fire wings Caw -caw. trim all that Getting in as tight as we can. It is imperative that we paint inside the lines now. This is all paint by numbers. Let's not get anything on the white. Let's make that easy because you know what? White is a straight bitch to paint over a dark color that you accidentally speckled onto it. There it is. Look at that decayed metal. Looks solid already. Very unique. All right, let's switch gears. Verdigris, dark green. We're going to do the fields in the shoulder pads real quick and the knees. This is solid. It's a great color from the new 15 secret weapon. I'm using it here for my Nurgle accent color. I think it's drab enough and fun enough that it's our style to always pick a color that's a little outside the box. And the highlight color we'll come back to will really sell it. There it is. Looks real good, real smooth finish there. It's coming together. All right. Let's move on. Dark Iron, Secret Weapon, New 15. Let's do some of these other bonus accents like the chain wrapped around his waist. Any other random vent you see, we're going to use Dark Iron, Secret Weapon. This is a great, just fun, dark metal. And it combos off with some of the other metallics in the line. So we'll come back, do the highlights later. Right now we're focusing down and blocking in all the colors. There we go. Real dark. Solid contrast. Let's move on to Model Air Black. One of my favorite blacks in the game. And we're going to just cut in some of these servos, some of these connection joints, these rubber connection joints between the armor panels, whatever they're made out of. Super easy. Could use soft body black, but it'd probably take a few coats. So we just jump the gun using an airbrush ready black. Too easy really sells it i love the white armor because you get so much contrast with everything on top all right brown rust secret weapon original 15. we're going to just block in some random details hanging from the cock chain i don't know what it's called not a not a chain scientist but we're just going to use this color because no because death guard and we'll highlight off of that no big deal it's a real good color. The, these 15, the original 15 weather, weather line from Secret Web Miniatures is so much coverage, man. The new 15 has more technicals and stuff, and they work really well together, but some of these colors, I just can't believe how well they cover. Now, Vallejo Red Air. This is the reddest red in the game, guys. We're gonna use it for the purity seals. Drop a little bit off. It's gonna be super bright, especially over all that white. 
It's gonna look its absolute reddest. Too easy. I think he's got three or four purity seals. Yep. We, I think we even missed one. We even painted the purity seals with a little bit of that, that rust as a base color to our work up on the parchment. Boom. Coming along. He's almost tabletop. Absolutely loving it. Transitions are looking great. The whites are looking clean, crisp, solid colors. This is probably one of my first Death Guard 30k Legion models I've ever painted. Okay, we're going to do something weird. Engine Rust, Cotton Candy. This is another secret weapon wash, but it's actually a glaze. Okay, guys? Do not wash with this. Glaze with it. So we mixed a little of the cotton candy into the engine rust to create just kind of a slightly pink, more pink flesh tone. And that's something else I learned is that the engine rust is absolutely a flesh tone if you want it to be. It's all about how you squint your eyes. Boom. Light dust, secret weapon miniatures. Great color. We're going to just combo off, start doing some details now, guys. We're going to go right over the parchment, the purity seals here. Quick light coat. Booyah. Work our way up to our final color. And we're just moving quick, guys. Staying busy in the Beats Lab. Using real thin coats of paint here, guys. Glazing as much on as we can. Orange Rust. An amazing color. We're going to bang down a quick glaze. Edge highlight. Combo off. On the cot chain jewelry. Too easy. I don't know what it is. A reliquary, I guess. And a scroll. Well, guess what, motherfuckers. You're, 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 you're getting a little bit of that orange rust on top of that red rust. I don't give a fuck what you are. Looking solid. Feeling it. Clean it up. Drop a crisp edge there. Make it interesting. Dude's running around with a chicken bone hanging from a chain wrapped around his waist. <laughs> yep. Chicken leg. Victorian brass. This is another scale. Now we're going to highlight off of that decayed metal. It's going to combo off so easy. Very little water even needed. Just a slight bit of water. A little bit of brush pressure. Just pay attention and you're going to get some amazing coverage here and some great interactions from these two colors. We're going to focus down, hit the wings, trace everything. It's, gonna, it's, it's literally so easy with these scale paints for gold. Never use a gold easier to use. Right now, we're just reinforcing that 90 degree cut. The shoulder pad, bring it up to that gold flare. Just tracing it. Try to create interesting transitions and interesting borders. Doing our best. There it is. See how easy that is? Look at that. It's pretty watered down, and, but look how much stick it's getting. The broader the surface, the more glaze we go with it. And this, these golds glaze super well. Something about that, they don't feel like they have that many metallic flakes in it. I don't know how they make it. I'm not a color scientist or a paint scientist, but that shit is dope. Same deal here on the wings. Ka -ka! Rapid fire. Hit those feathers. Bring it up a notch. One, two, three. That, that fast. Look at that. All day, every day. Love me. Some golds and the way they interact. It looks super imperial ball balling all day i feel like we're just about put this guy in the table now minus his cape don't look at his cape all right we're gonna now do the final gold highlight that dwarven gold same thing we just did rapid fire reinforce it i like how i like to build my metallics up that's definitely my style you almost don't need a wash when you do it this way, but we're gonna use a wash. <laughs> you know, we, we can't go anywhere without our wash game. Look at that amazing interaction we're getting with the new gold highlighted off of our two stage highlight. It's amazing. Engine metal. This is a warm metal. We're gonna use it to highlight the cock chain. Rapid fire, secret weapon miniatures. Super easy. These are the details I always preach, guys. Pay attention to these details. Have patience. This really didn't take too long, guys. I sat down and filmed this whole thing today. And we're hitting all the little edges, all the little details. Doing our absolute best to keep it icy. 
I love a good chain. This might be my new thing. I might need to get a waist chain. Feeling it. All right, guys. Second pass on the face. That was one real thin coat. As you've seen, the theme of today's video is thin coats, guys. <laughs> that easy. Everything is as thin as possible. All right, let's pull out the soft body black. Rapid fire, do a quick little shade here in the cut on that green. And this is one of my favorite things about uh, Secret Web Miniature Wash game right here. This soft body black, look, look how good it interacts with a color like that. Look at that lacquered look we got. Absolutely adore that wash. All right, parchment. This is one of the washes from Secret Weapon, but this is not really a wash. This is a glaze. Like I said, these things are just all blanket washes. We're going to glaze it on to our already previously highlighted purity seals, and we're going to absolutely reinforce the parchment effect. We built up to that color because the glaze is so thin, there's no way we could have glazed over the darkness. But hey, look at that. Armor wash. Now, this is a traditional wash, guys. I think it almost has a little green in it, maybe a little black and brown. It's a solid armor wash. Does work. Gives you an interesting look. All right. Free bonus trick right here. Always do what I just did right there, or these motherfuckers will explode on you. <laughs> Let's switch to flesh wash. Another secret weapon wash. And let's just see how it interacts with this skin. Not bad. Not gonna lie, I'm not gonna misrepresent a product. Uh, I, it's good. It's not the best. But I definitely think it has more applications than just washing faces. Look at this. Dropping a little bit here on the parchment. And then we're gonna get an insanely realistic effect here. Look at that. It looks exactly like how I think old ass paper looks. So I, like I said, the, the wash game from Secret Web Miniature is tight, but don't look at it as like you wash things in the end. It has glazing applications, uh, shading applications. It gives you a lacquered effect. I'm not huge in the lacquered effect on the skin, but I absolutely am in love with it on those metal pieces and those green fields. All right, guys, let's talk about something real quick. It's time to whip out the white. Now I'm going to talk about how I'm going to glaze. That's a little bit of a medium. It's a little bit of white paint, a little bit of water. Let me talk about the consistency we're going for here. That, that's pretty thin, but we want to be a little thinner. So check it out. You can do this exact thing in a little bottle cap lid, anything. And you see how thin we're trying to work here. As an example, we're about to pull out our paintbrush and that's how thin we're going to start using the paint. But sometimes we're going to do a quick edge highlight and that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to be moving back between the two hard edges and soft glazes. One, two, three, go. This is a soft glaze. We're subtly pulling from the edge into the greater surface there on that belly armor. And we'll come back in, do it several times. I'm not going to show you all 30 times I did it, and that's an exaggeration, two or three times. But I am gonna show you this one time, rapid fire. There it is, nice clean glaze, and it's super important to let it totally dry between stages, or it will just peel off. Now, on things like fingers, I'm absolutely gonna come in and do the edge highlight that we talked about before, because when you have it all thin out, for the glaze process, it's a little hard to control when you're trying to get down into the nitty gritty to highlight a perfect little razor edge. So go back and go back and forth. That's why I don't mix it all together in one slurry. I have a couple of piles, a little pile of medium, a little pile of paint, a little pile of water, and I will I will decide how my paint needs to be. Like down here on these little shoe cogs, I don't know. We're go, we're going in hot quick highlight then we're gonna reach back grab a little soft body black reinforce some of these highlights some of these shades too easy it's a back and forth process have all your stuff available to you stay busy stay focused focus on one section at a time and keep going uh, or jump around if that's how you that your style like there's literally no actual answer to this 
And you see we're just methodically glazing in whites over panels, subtly blending it back in off of that soft body black. And it's really easy. Once you understand how the glaze works, it's just it's about just being patient. But if you keep moving, by the time you need to come back to where you started, it's always gonna be dry and ready for some more glazing. So if like you realize, hey, I need to be a little brighter, cool, add a little more. Oh, okay, it's just bright enough. Stop, hit the edge like, like I'm doing right here. Clean edge highlight. Making that white look its absolute best. Okay. This face is a hard face to paint, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of squiggly details. All sorts of stuff I wasn't thinking, I guess. It's from AOS. It's, I think, the Hugh, the banner bearer of corn. I thought it was suitably chaotic. So we're just using our engine rust. And we're just going to start finding all the areas, the wash left raised. And we're just going to glaze in details. Same protocol. A little glaze on the fat areas. Less water and less medium for the, the more razor edges. So we're gonna establish cleaner highlights without letting them blur out and just go back and forth. Same process. The wash did most of the work for us. It showed us where we needed to highlight, how to continue highlighting. That's what I love about a good wash game. And this face is absolutely a bitch. It's a back and forth process. I really wish I hadn't used it, but I do love the way it looks. Real quick, he's got some hair and a long ponytail that you're not gonna see the ponytail, but you are gonna see his hair. And you see, I just quickly rabbit fire painted all the jewelry in his forehead. He's got all these like piercings, it's crazy. Highlighting, final highlights. And remember, the cool thing about glaze is the more times you do it, the brighter it gets. So you see his arm is looking much brighter because I fast forwarded all the billion glaze steps. And on the face, you see how much brighter it's getting already. And that's just contrast. I like making the bright areas brighter, dark areas darker, speaking of which, a little bit of black on the brush. And we're gonna trace out that scar he has going from his mouth all the way up to his eye and beyond. It's really necessary to use black here. Red isn't gonna do it, you need an ultimate contrast. And then you can come back in and maybe glaze a little red near it, but be careful, this face is subtle. It's all hell. Look at him, it's looking miserable. <laughs> you know, we'll come in with a couple extra details, paint in his mouth. We're gonna have to definitely knock out his teeth, figuratively. Boom, a little bit of gray, a little white mixed with black, pow. We just came in there and painted his eye, didn't show it all off, but hey, I've painted faces before. But that's pretty much it, man. That's, that's like one day of work right there, chilling in the beat slab, doing our thug thizzle. Now, obviously, verdigris, pale green, new 15, one last razor edge highlight. This is not a glaze, this is a clean edge highlight on the tops of both knee pads and in the 90 degree cut on the shoulder pads. This is gonna be our final stroke before we paint that cape. Boom, one clean line, flip it over. I like to always, when I'm doing straight lines, I always like to have to pull toward me. I always feel like I get them the first time. All right, let's talk about it, guys. Twitch is where the live tutorials happen. This guy right here, look at him with his cape on. It's a different story. Well, we didn't paint the cape deliberately. We're going to be painting it live Friday, literally this Friday, unless it's next Friday. And we're going to be taking it to the next level, guys. That's how we do things anyway. Play on, players. 